Okay, so now we've talked a little bit about the deformation gradient tensor in the previous lecture. Now we want to talk about how to use that to define our first strain tensor. So I want to remind you here in this figure of, of what the deformation process looks like that we're, we're looking at. So we have some point P, capital P, and its location is represented by the vector capital X. And, and during some motion, some deformation, the point P moves to the point little p. And that location is at C. We also are interested in how does a, some differential vector at, located at point P, and I'm, of course, drawn it larger so you can see it, and we'll call that, that the, the differential vector runs from P to Q. And then during, during a deformation, that point Q, capital Q, moves to little q. Okay, now this initial displacement is just u, and this displacement here is, whoops, let's try that again. This displacement up here is u plus du, okay? So, we want to use those quantities now to define uh, deformation. So this dc, that's what's happened to the vector dx. So if I were to ask you, what are the some deformation measures that we might actually care about? Uh, usually I end up getting, the only answer I get when I ask this question usually is delta L over L. Uh, that's the strain that everybody seems comfortable with. So if we were to think through that, that would basically look like what's the magnitude of dc divided by the magnitude of uh, or rather dc minus dx, the magnitudes, divided by the magnitude of dx, right? That's delta L over L. So that's true. Uh, we're going we're gonna to show how that uh, comes about and, and why that definition works, at least in the small strain case. But we want to develop uh, um, a little bit richer um, sense of the strain tensor. So we want to just ask the question, uh, what are the measures that we can, we can talk about to, for, uh, for talking about deformation? So what measures to use for deformation? Okay, and one measure, as you probably guessed, is change in length. The second and one that's a little bit more uh, challenging to come up with on the fly is potentially change in shape. And if we're actually um, computing change in shape, we'll actually take two differential vectors and look at their angle. So when I say change in shape, I mean change in the angle between two vectors, okay? For this lecture, we're just going to talk about change in uh, change in length. So here we go. Change in length, and the most simple way we could describe change in length. Here I'll just say simplest is just the quantity would be dc minus dx, right? The magnitudes. That would be the easiest form for change in length. Um, uh, we're going to use, and this is out of convention and also becomes more convenient to actually use uh, with um, tensor quantities. So we're going to use the quantity dc squared minus dx squared, right? That's still a measure of the change in length. It's just not a linear measure of the change in length. Okay, so how are we going to write this down? Well, we can say that what's d, oops, Make sure I remember, remind you these are vectors. So how do I get the magnitude of a vector squared? Well, hopefully you remember from uh, your undergraduate career, we can just take the dot product. So if we were to write that out, this looks like dCi, dCi. And here I'm using index notation just simply out of convenience. And these are, of course, i's are the dummy indices, minus d. X, I'm going to use K as my dummy index here. Okay, 
So there, now now I've written it and you're going, why and why did you do that? That doesn't help. So what do we need to do to, to make any progress? Well, this term here, we need to, well, that's a terrible handwriting. Okay, so we need to uh, express in terms of dx, Okay, how can we do that? So, well, recall the deformation gradient tensor. So recall that we had the deformation gradient tensor that looked like Fij, which we def that's which is by definition is the partial of the current divided by partial of the reference. Okay, and we also said we could rewrite this as dx. Sorry. D C I is equal to F I J D X J. So there I have D X I, I have up here a D X I, and I have a way now to relate that to uh, my original uh, differential vector D X J. So I can just go ahead and substitute. So I'll say substituting. I can write now that d c squared minus d x squared is going to be equal to f i. I have to be a little careful here. Uh, I can use j. So let's see, f i j, just like I had before, uh, d x j. But in this particular term, I'm not free to actually use j again because I've already used it once. I am free if I want. I can use k again because it's in a different term and it's a dummy index. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and write this as f i k d x k and then minus d x k d x k. Okay, so just as a reminder, that quantity, that's dxi, and this quantity is dxi, okay? So let me just go ahead and rearrange this. I'm going to move the dx, uh, dxj and dxk to the other, to the right-hand side of that term and write this as fij, fik, and then dxj, dxk minus dx k dx k okay so what do we want to do now uh, and I'm, I'm working this through in gory detail in part so you can kind of see how um, how we manipulate uh, tensors in a sort of an algebraic fashion okay so now what we need to do is it would be really nice is if we could factor something right so if I could pull out a dxj dxk term so I have that here. Here I have a dxk, dxk. So I can't really factor it. So I have to do a little bit of uh, substitution. So we could write dxk is equal to delta jk times dxj, right? That's legal. Okay, and if I do that, I can go ahead and substitute now. So here I'm going to write this down for you again dxc squared minus dx squared is going to be equal to fij fik dxj dxk minus and I'm just going to use this once because I still want the I want one of the dxks there so minus delta jk dx j times dx k and now I have what I want I have that quantity and that quantity that are the same okay so now we're in a position to factor out these uh, quantities here in brackets and so we can write f i j 
F I K minus delta J K times D X J D X K. Okay? So we basically have this quantity here multiplied by uh, the differential vector in, in reference space. And we're going to just now introduce a definition. So we define what's called the Lagrange finite strain tensor. as follows. We define it as capital E and this uh, this case I'm just going to put it as maybe just for consistency I'll go ahead and use the same uh, index values that I have up there. We'll call it E J K. It's going to be equal to one half F I J F I K minus delta J K. Okay. So we could also write that in direct notation if you like, and say that that's the tensor E equals one half times F transpose times F minus the identity matrix I. Okay. So. This is the Lagrange finite strain tensor. What does it do? Well, we know that it tells us if we if we multiply that by in, in in tensor fashion by the differential vector length, it gives us the the some measure of the change in that length. Okay? And you're going, "Well, that's again not helpful. I want delta L over L." Well, great. <laughs> you're going to get delta L over L, but we need to uh, do a few more things to specialize this strain tensor. We actually need to go to the small strain case to be able to show that. Um, so that'll be the, the topic of um, our next module. So to complete out this this uh, section on the, the Lagrange finite strain tensor, we can then uh, rewrite the, the, ch the change in length measure. So change in length. is now going to be given by dxc squared minus dx squared is equal to 2 e j k times dx j dx k. So there's, there's our first relationship um, that we want to uh, use as we go forward.